We have a great show for you today as we gear up for the final week before the playoffs. We're going to look at the Thursday night matchup, get into a bunch of news, and some really genuinely, excruciatingly hard questions on today's episode. Like, subscribe, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome, man. Wednesday, December 7th. Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike, Andy, Jason on the show today. I see what you did. <laughs> oh. Could be the best open of all time. <laughs> Could be. We'll, we'll find well, out. Well, I mean, you've got the Christmas gear on today, so i got to give it to you. Uh, there is a big Christmas activity planned for the rights mm. after this. Uh, yeah, after today's show? or at, After the work day. Okay. Uh, there will be much uh, festivities, some ice skating. Really? Some eating of the, I don't know, Christmas cookies cookies, yeah. and the holiday spirits. We've, we've Good got, times. We've got something planned, too. The holidays. Maybe I'll see you there. I, I was going to say. <laughs> Did yours cost way too much money? <laughs> eh, debatable. <laughs> We're doing one of those uh, the drive-through Christmas lights. Oh, things. right on! Yeah, 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 yeah. No, oh, mine's I'm hanging out in some some, pla- f- some expensive Christmas place. Yeah. Um. No, the first day I listened to Christmas music on the way in. What? Oh. I know like you day guys have been doing, forty-five. <laughs> you do it every day. I do. I do. I take my kids to school every morning, and we listen to Christmas. Songs. Do you like the Christmas classics, or do you like the mm. poppy Christmas? We usually, for the sake of the children, they prefer the pop Christmas. Oh, oof. Gross. Oh, are no, you a classic? Some, oh, I love the classics. Yeah. I, I switch from the pop to Give the classics. Give me old blue eyes. Um, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree spans both, I feel like. Yeah. There, there's, that, that's pop and classic. Yeah. They're in like Run Run Rudolph. Like, yeah. That one, that, that still bangs. Mariah Carey's pretty much yes. generationless here for Christmas music. Totally agree. Her but, kids, 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 kids will be making royalties off of that Have stuff. you seen her like tweet about the, the checks that she gets every... Oh, holiday no. season. No, I have not, but I, mean, I believe it. It's it's an outrageous amount of money, and it will never go away. All never she wants stop. forever. Christmas is cash. <laughs> I mean, that is... <laughs> That's her song. We don't have any Christmas... We need something that is licensable. You guys want to do an album? Mike could do it. Dude, we Christmas. could do a Christmas <laughs> album. Like, uh, you see the Eagles? Do they have a Christmas album? You didn't see the Eagles? What? Oh, oh it's, yeah, I It's saw it. wonderful. New? Yeah, Jason Kelsey year. with the uh, what the bass? oh 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 <laughs> he's thinking the band yeah the <laughs> I was like what how did uh, that happen Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast Yes I did see the uh, people were really excited about some subpar singing Yeah well I mean when you see the Philadelphia Kelsey Eagles was and, was fine Look he was he was given it as but all. Who, whoever was on the uh, soprano Oh I didn't make it that far Oh much better. <laughs> Okay, I'll tune back in. We will be live on Spotify later this afternoon for the uh, Christmas party room, 3 p.m. Pacific, <laughs> 6 p.m. Eastern. It's just going to be Christmas music. Oh, yeah. We'll work. Ch- we'll, we'll get our album going there. We can get it going, yeah. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. Thanks for joining us today. We have Ride or Die on the show. Some uh, Quite a bit of news to talk about the Thursday night preview mailbag. Get you ready for your fantasy playoffs or uh, your big matchup to make the playoffs this week. Lots going on. Lots of drama in our league, so I know there is drama in yours. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's going to be a good one. We do have oh. an announcement. I need I need the, uh, the horn. Where's the button? Where's the horn? Can someone get me a horn? <laughs> Thank you. Good work, uh, producers. <laughs> oh, that was the... <laughs> Damn, oh, so many horns. We, uh, we wanted to... Win. Invite. <laughs> we want to win, Foot Clan. Invite the Foot Clan to participate. Uh, we were uh, privileged to be nominated for a couple of Signal Awards. 
which is their first annual, I believe, uh, yes. listener vote podcast awards. It's from the people from the Webbies. Yes. So we were nominated for the best commute podcast and best video podcast. Now, do, when they say best commute podcast, are they just saying like it's real long? Uh, Maybe. I think yeah, it's I mean, more than a daily. Different angle. I take it as the daily routine. Okay. You're going to listen okay. to this every that's, single That's way day. better than me thinking that, well, there's, this is a long podcast. Right. We'll just call it a commuter. <laughs> Best, yeah, best podcast for, for heavy traffic. Yes. I don't know. Uh, FootClanVote.com. It's uh, free to participate. You can vote one time per category. If you want to help for, us for out. Email address. If you, <laughs> if you want to help us out, FootClanVote.com. We'd appreciate it. That would be, um, that'd be swell. The Foot Clan is mighty and strong. Yes. I have no doubt that we will stay undefeated, Foot Clan. Come go, on. Go flex on them. Foot yes. Clan vote. FootClanVote.com. All right, quick question of the day. With one week left in the regular season, what is the current lay of the land in your main leagues? This is a question that comes from the Foot Clan. Are you fighting for a bye week, fighting for a playoff spot? As much detail as we want to go into. Sure. Obviously, we've got some leagues that are – I've been mentioning like Brooks and I fighting it out in our dynasty league where mm -hmm. uh, we have the craziest league right now where – one division is has four members that are nine and four. Yeah, it's insane. And as of right now, all four from the same division are making the playoffs. Um, in that league, I am outside the playoffs now. I just I was the the first team out. Um, That's the worst place. The last to be. team out. What do you what yeah. do you call that? Uh, first loser. Yes. Okay. Yes. But not last place. Like, Although I did no. get the 101 from yes. the trade, and that's great. As you say, that's the worst place because you get the worst pick possible, but you get none of the playoffs. Yeah, no which chance is, at a championship. To transition into our league of record, which is what I am primed to receive. I uh, I have a slim chance if Mike loses and another team loses to, to sneak into the playoffs. Uh, Mike needs to win, and he's, he's probably going to be in. I have the bye week pretty much locked up yeah. in that league. And then in our League of Shadows league, we are currently sitting first, second, and third place in that league. So good job, fellas. Good work, yes. All right. Uh, any you know any headlines oh, uh, there? Also, the Brooks, Megalobol. you getting your first title? I sure hope so. <laughs> but not counting on it. Uh, the Megalobol, the most important league yes. on planet Earth, other than the League of Record. Um I uh, I would say I have the bye week, but there is no such thing in the Megala Bowl. Playoff bound. Remember last year, the League of Record was not the most important league to you. Correct. It just is a matter of uh, what league we could win a championship. So, like, Mike, you and yes. I won a championship in the Dino Junior, and that was the most important league. Yes. League of Record stays the most important league till the moment you are eliminated from mm -hmm. the playoffs. Right. Then What's your most important league, Mike? <laughs> Currently League of Record. Mine, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not by much. Not by much. <laughs> but uh, good luck to everybody out there. I know you're fighting for playoff spots. And uh, hopefully my my uh, Christmas wish this week is that if you go out, you go out swinging. You don't go out due to first quarter uh, injuries. You don't go out due to start-sit decisions that you catastrophically made. You go out swinging. If someone beats you, they beat you. I mm -hmm. mean, the – what? Not everybody wins a championship. Just do, one team. Do so not go quietly into the night. Yes, yes as Bill Pullman would say. <laughs> yes, former very, former president Bill Pullman, very famous president philosopher. Yeah, Bill Pullman. We do not go quietly into the night because <laughs> he wrote that. Yes. Uh, let's do some ride or die. Ride or die, presented by Chevrolet. Hopping into ride or die last week, uh, it looks as though I got two or three. Jason got one or three. Mike was not here. That Infinite. is correct. We uh, we basically had the tiebreaker on Alvin Kamara over under 10 fantasy points. He most certainly did not get 10 fantasy points. And uh, before I hop into the week 14 ride or die predictions that Brooks has prepared for us, instead of producing the show like he should be doing, Al is busy figuring out what our Christmas band will be. Mm. Oh. Uh, because Brooks can play guitar. 
Oh, we're we're situating the, the I instruments. Think so. and yeah. Stuff. Okay. I think it's just gonna be a bunch of guitars. <laughs> <laughs> I no. don't I, I'm on I'm on bass and, and horns. Mike's Are playing you? electric. Brooks okay. on Mike electric guitar to too. Andy on no, acoustic. No, no, Jeremy can play. Oh, you're on bass? Yeah. Yeah. And our manager, Damon. I'm on acoustic. On oh, that's true. Okay. And what, what's Jason doing? I got vocals, brother. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I was thinking kazoo. Oh, sure. Ooh. Well, it's certainly a harmonica at okay. the very least. Okay. You know, you like, <laughs> the harmonica has not made yeah. its way into Christmas songs well, very often. Like You yet. actually have to know how to play a harmonica. Yeah, I do. You, 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 uh, you oh. wail? Oh, wail so hard. <laughs> Kyle, do you play anything? I, I played an iPod really well. Oh. oh, you're a DJ. You never did the band thing in I, high school? I could backup dance if you guys oh, need that. that. We Not do. frontline dancing, we which do we need. do need, but the backup dance. We won't have a front dance. Like the, uh, the uh, what up with that? We need our Jason yeah. Sudeikis. Okay. Ooh, we. <laughs> All right. This is good, and we're leaving Josh out. Uh, week 14 ride or die predictions, Brooks. What do you have for us? All right, guys, DJ Moore at Seattle. He was on bye last week, but in week 12 versus uh, Denver, he had 18 fantasy points. Can he get to 10 fantasy points this week? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> when given oh, the opportunity man. to bet on DJ Moore meeting a threshold, I will bet against. Yeah. It makes 10 fantasy points a sense. very low threshold. Don't tell that to Mike Evans. <laughs> Yeah, or Alvin Kamara. Yeah, or DJ Moore. So I will. I am going to choose die here. Um, Sam Darnold gives you a little bit of hope. He had over a hundred yards last week. Uh, last time we saw him against the Denver Broncos, and the Seattle matchup is not bad. But I would agree with you, Andy. When you have a chance to bet against DJ Moore, you take it. Mike, I understand the logic and uh, the brain. Says bet against D uh, DJ Moore, but my heart will always be with DJ Moore. And with like Sam Darnold and DJ Moore putting up 18 points against the Denver Broncos, having a bye week to maybe solidify some things. Uh, I know that Seattle is they're they're good at home, and they're they're a strange team. They they can be hot and cold, but I will buy or a uh, ride. I'm sorry, I will ride with DJ Moore hitting that threshold. I think he gets enough volume to get there. Najee Harris takes on Baltimore at home. Brooks set the line at top 24. Bye. Mike is ride. in. Ride. I can forget the game. I'll ride. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it, this, is a, this is a really good line because Baltimore's defense has gotten – There's six teams on bye. <laughs> much better, but that's the issue, <laughs> right? Ride. That's 100% Made it. Made before you. Um, with six teams on bye – didn't you, do it last week against Atlanta. Didn't do it the week before against Indianapolis. Just throwing that out there. Well, last week, both of those weeks, 25 and 29, so you take six teams away. He did it. I ride. Yes. What are you I think there do? were six teams on by the week before against Indianapolis, but I will. Uh, I have to buy, uh, ride. <laughs> we forget our own game. I blame you, Mike. <laughs> can we change this to uh, – can we change it to top 20? Oh, Sounds good to don't, me. Don't do that. That okay. way I can go ahead and – Die. I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with out. I'm with you, Andy. I have him in my rankings as the running back twenty. <laughs> He's in. <laughs> that is, he he is just holding on to the the tailgate there. Uh, I'm gonna ride. Let's okay. go. Let's go, Najee. And then Dak Prescott taking on Houston. Houston just announced they're starting Davis Mills, which I saw is, we it, saw coming. Is that better or worse for my Dallas? It's worse. That's worse. Oh, it's That's much, much worse. worse. Much, yeah. much worse. Uh, but not by like. <laughs> like it's not much, by a, much worse. They'll only be the number one defense. Yeah, on the they'll world. be the number one by a, <laughs> a lesser margin. Two passing touchdowns for Dak against Houston. Oh, he has oh, two, there's... two plus in five straight games. The Texans have allowed two passing touchdowns. Get this. Just three times this year I allowed, love it. allowed. <laughs> yeah, the, the verbiage there is so the, unfair the other teams have chosen yes. to throw two passing touchdowns only three times and they've needed to throw two passing touchdowns right. may, maybe once based on the record I'm going to die here I I don't think he gets to two and he easily could but you are gambling on what the first two touchdowns come from the first two or three and it, it's just the defense can score. The running game is going to have 
I think have it its is, way. I think it is just as likely that Ezekiel Elliott has two rushing touchdowns as it is that Dak throws two touchdowns in the game. So I, I, I will die as well. Andy, you and I are simpatico across the board this week. And I will make sure that I am not completely shut out compared to you guys, so I will also die. It is, it's been a weird... You're hoping that the, at the goal line they do a fade. It's That's been a weird year because like the Texans give up points... And they've had a few big games, like the Raiders put up 38 on and the Chargers put up 34. But then you've had, like, you know, t Titans score 17. Eagles 29, you would have thought maybe they'd put a few more up. Giants 24. You're going to get one defensive, two offensive at least, yeah, right? So, so what, are we, what are we doing with Dak? I mean, it's bad. Like, I... Because he's, he's good. He has the weapons. Yeah, like, CeeDee Lamb has been truly elite this year and you're fighting for your playoff spot do you really bench no, you a good quarterback for a streaming option who might be in a uh shootout potential i don't think you can but i was in this exact boat two weeks ago with Tua a tongue of Iloa, and he went out and put up 20 points and it was really disappointing from a fantasy team so you know i think the d more difficult decision would be if you have dak or jared goff goff and cousins i'll yeah. say both in that okay. game I'm playing the shootout potential there. So yeah. you will you will bench Dak for those two players. I would, and I would say I like, would. Even if you're, what if you're the heavy favorite? Um, would you just take your quarterback points? Probably. Let me okay. read to you the quarterback points in four point per passing touchdown scored against the Houston Texans going backwards from this last week. Yeah. Six point three fantasy points. We won't speak about who that is. <laughs> Uh, 14 <laughs> fantasy points, seven fantasy points, 18 fantasy points, 20. We got to 20. That was Jalen Hurts. Who put up seven? Uh, who put up seven? That would be the Manders. So oh. uh, Taylor Heineke, uh, 13 fantasy points, 12 fantasy points, 21. I'm all the way back to week four right now. And that was Justin Herbert. I was going to say that had to have been Herbert. 6.9. Nice. 12.1 and 16.3. So two times on the season, Dude. A, a fantasy quarterback has scored 20 points. No and they've ever barely hit. gone over to his 20 on the dot and 21. So there's no upside here to play a quarterback. I, I think, Dak, if you're in a situation where you're the, the, the dominant favorite, okay, go put Dak out there, get your 18, 19, 20 points. He's going to be fine. But if you are in a, I need to win, I, I'm going up against a tough matchup, I, I don't know that you're going to get anything special from Dak. And I, honestly, Cousins and Goff feel pretty safe right now. Like, Goff isn't missing weapons anymore, right? We have a healthy Amon Ross St. Brown. You have Chark out there. Now Jamison so Williams is potentially another one. You Swift. DeAndre Swift yeah. is healthy. Like, Goff is safer than you think at this point. And then Kirk Cousins against Detroit's defense with Justin Jefferson should be Safe enough for 20. And he added Hawkinson to the offense, which has helped him tremendously. And Hawkinson gets revenge game against Detroit, who can't guard tight ends. I love that matchup. Yeah. So I think I think you are trying. If you need any sort of upside, you've got to make an effort to to move. Like, oh, Dak, could, Dak could throw zero touchdowns in this game. That's so brutal. That's a, that's a really tough decision. It is. That was Ride or Die, presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Well, we got word this morning that Trevor Lawrence, quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars, will not practice on Wednesday, considered day-to-day, -day, and he's unsure to play on Sunday. Which, when this came through, I went, what? And then, we didn't we didn't mention this uh during an earlier show, Trevor Lawrence went down. Season-ending injury. Like, and just like in a heap. What was it right before the half or yes. something? It and was a bad grabbing, injury. Grabbing at his leg. He had the, the aesthetics of, oh, no. It looked like Trevor the Lawrence. knee was done or maybe he had a high ankle sprain at best. He, I mean, honestly, I, I thought that was the end of his season. And then he ended up coming out and in the second Paul half pierced in, it. in starting and now has a foot injury. So... This isn't actually out of nowhere, and it needs to be paid attention to. When, when guys have these, these foot and ankle injuries, often they can power through for the remainder of a game, but then whew, swells up like a balloon and starts to really, really hurt. So if Trevor Lawrence is your guy heading forward, you need to have uh, – you need to prepare – 
just in case Lawrence isn't available. It also impacts your view of Christian Kirk, Zay Jones. Yes, it does. Uh, C.J. Beathard's the backup, just for the record there. Not okay. the end of the world, yeah, but, not th but you don't know who he throws. You know, will they run the ball a ton? Right. Lamar Jackson's knee injury was confirmed as a sprained PCL per Adam Schefter. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, gave us some notes on this. Multi-week injury, two to four weeks most likely. Uh, the mobility rushing upside is going to be negatively affected. We're probably not going to see any sort of vintage Lamar rest of the year, which begs the question that I know oh, Brooks no. said. Don't saw ask it. All it, over social media, do you just too difficult. do you just drop Lamar Jackson? If it's multi week, oh, two to four God. weeks is most likely. Like this was an offense that was being discussed before Lamar was even hurt as a problem for your fantasy team because he doesn't have explosive weapons. Like Deshaun Jackson just got called up from the practice squad permanently. Uh, Demarcus Robinson's being talked about way too much on this show. <laughs> like you know, the offense had been struggling. If you take away his rushing, yeah, oh yes, you're in you're in deep doo doo. I mean, he's been on like 14 passing touchdown pace for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah, I mean, since that week three explosion and when he basically lost Bateman, uh, his fantasy finishes 13 points, 14, 16, 10, 21, 17, 15, 23. Like the you're you're let's say he's fully healthy, like he was for all of those games. He hasn't been something super special, so if you've got to make a move, I think you you can. And just do the just work out the math. Let's say two weeks is what he misses. Okay, so he misses fourteen, misses fifteen. Playing him in the semis off of this injury when you don't know that he's going to run, super duper sketchy. So but that, that matchup is Atlanta in week sixteen. Oh gosh! So it's going to be it's going to be extremely tempting. Home. Oh, my gosh. You'd but, probably put him on your IR spot, hopefully, just in case. Right, but saying it would take some real stones to put him out there in that first matchup. And then you're – Totally agree. And then it's to the point of, okay, I guess if he comes out there and he's perfectly healthy, looks great, then you can play him in championship week. But that's a at this point when you are penny-pinching on your, your bench of, like, this is the time of year that if I have the spot, I'm looking – Two weeks ahead for my defensive stash. If you don't have a locked and loaded starter, you need to be playing your matchups right now and getting ahead of people. So that's hopefully you got the IR spot. But I, I think if you have a shallow bench, you may have to drop him. There was only one team that placed a claim on quarterback Baker Mayfield. It was the Los Angeles Rams. And so we will be previewing the Rams Raiders game today. It's not impossible that Baker is available for that game. So ridiculous. If you've watched what, you know, first Bryce Perkins and then John Wolford did, like Baker is probably fine for that and there was, final sunset ride of the Rams this I, year. I saw a uh a tweet that was resurfaced. I can't re remember which beat reporter it was, but it was back from the draft year of Baker Mayfield and and Sean McVay was extremely high on Baker Mayfield. Oh, I thought he was high on something else. Well, I mean, it, perhaps we all were when we thought that Baker was going to be something special. But so coaches hold on to those feelings of, like, I saw this prospect. I'm a great coach. I can turn that prospect into the player he should have been. So there there are those possibilities that McVay actually is interested in Baker. Well, what did when you say yesterday? Yeah, say there's there is I think a very strong likelihood that Stafford will be done. That he will he has his Super Bowl, he has an incredible career, he has more money than he will ever be able to spend in his lifetime because he was still uh he was the number one pick back when the CBAs were still broken. So his first contract, he he got it's probably like 60 he mil. Got crazy money as a rookie for never starting a game. I think that Matt Stafford has a really high likelihood of retiring. Um, and either way, so maybe Baker Mayfield's, they're trying to start now to look for the future of the quarterback position, or they're playing chess of, we take on Baker Mayfield's salary right now. Should he go and sign somewhere next year with any sort of contractual obligations to that team? Compensatory pick comes back to us, and all we have to do is pay him a million dollars or whatever this year. Yeah. Baker's not a good enough quarterback to be the future of that team, no matter what Sean McVay I, does. It, yeah, I, I tend to agree, but these coaches, they think they can shine a turd very often.
Let's take a minute to remember what we were supposed to remember before the season. Mm -hmm. These quarterbacks, if you just look real quick, Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield, off-season quarterback splashes, mediocre additions, the veteran changing teams. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Oh, man. The ability to paint the picture with our rose-colored glasses of what can go right. You know, I remember they, Baker's much better than Darnold and P.J. Walker. No, I mean, we he's not. He's not. Right. He got benched for P.J. Walker. Yeah, right. I mean, Matt Ryan is so much better than Carson Wentz. No. No, he, he got wasn't. benched for Sam Ellinger. <laughs> yeah, Carson Wentz is so much better than Taylor Heineke. No, he got benched for Taylor Heineke. I mean, that's so, crazy. So let's remember again that very rarely do teams successfully patch that hole through free agency, especially through somebody else's discarded former right. quarterback. Like, the Falcons moved on, right? The Colts moved on from Carson Wentz. The Seahawks moved on from Russell Wilson. That one was a little different. But, you know, you, you just rarely find the Kurt Warner diamond in the rough, the Carson Palmer free agent that fixes it and is fantasy they traded relevant. For Palmer. Right. Um, which will if, – if Stafford does retire, the, the Cooper Cup question over the offseason oh boy. is going to be – very difficult because yeah. you, you say, well, he was great with Jared Goff. Yeah, look at Jared Goff in Detroit. He's still a capable quarterback. He he wasn't good enough, at least the Rams believe, to win the Super Bowl, but he's good enough for fantasy. When you talk about a team that has no draft assets like the Rams, and if they right. lose Donald, if they lose um, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Donald. Donald and Matthew Stafford, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility they move on from Cooper Cup. Because there's only a few options you have to trade for draft assets. So if you do go into some sort of rebuilding oh, mode in a division that's going to have much better quarterback play than your team, I'm. it's not impossible that they – because that was rumored even earlier this year. is like, what assets do you have to give away? Like, you can't trade Aaron Donald right. if he retires. Now, I think McVay would throw the deuces up at that point, too. Yeah, I go, would. Go get that bag from Amazon. Yeah, you're right, and um, that'll be something to monitor this off season. Enjoy your Super Bowl, Los Angeles. Yeah, and they will. And it's, I mean, I wish I had. I, would I wish I had one. <laughs> I'll mortgage everything for it. Darren Waller on track to come off injured reserve in Week 15 against the Patriots. This is hyper relevant for fantasy going into the playoffs. The tight end position was led by Noah Fant and 42 yards. Oh, sorry, Taysom Hill, and then Noah Fant this past week, and he's waited an extremely long amount of time to come back from this. Not a guarantee that he'll be productive, but your options are saying, boy, am I going to roll out like Tyler Conklin this week or try it out with Darren Waller? Like, I'm going to go to Waller. So are you stashing Waller? 100%. If he, like, Waller might be on waiver wires. Leagues that don't have the IR spot, I think you should go have a peek. Yeah, you have If to. I don't have Kelsey, Andrews. Hawkinson. Yeah. Yeah, I'd put Hawkinson in there. Kittle. Uh, if, Schultz. If Schultz. Kittle. Uh, the Schultz I would, line. Uh, Schultz is the line. I, I think even if I've got Kittle, I would at least pick up Darren Waller. Just, you know, you don't yeah. know what Brock Purdy is going to be able to do with this offense yet. Man, do I like his name, though. Jimmy Garoppolo has a chance to return in 78 weeks. Not relevant for fantasy that we play off. Jacoby S Myers. 78 weeks. Yeah, that, okay, I heard it too. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> Seven, two, eight. Yeah, I spoke a little quickly there. <laughs> if it's 78 weeks. That's, like, that's that's a very, bad injury. It's also very precise. Like well it done. Is. <laughs> it's not a it's not a year and a half. No, it's seventy eight. If weeks. you told me like okay, he hurt his he hurt his shin <laughs> and he'll be back in thirty six days. Right, that'd be pretty cool. It's like my newborn is sixteen months old. <laughs> yeah. Why are we doing this? Why are, he's one? <laughs> Why are we doing this? Yeah. When does that stop? I don't know. Newborn? I don't know. Twenty four months for me. Twelve months. <laughs> Right. One. Yeah. We, we, made a, <laughs> we made a thing. It's called a year. We did that so you could say a year. Uh, all right. We're moving on here. Damian Harris, Jacoby Myers, not seen practicing. Myers evaluated for a concussion last week. Damian Harris still dealing with the injury from Thanksgiving, and we won't get an official injury report until Thursday, and they play on Monday night. So Jacoby does have an extra day to get through the protocol. Yeah, but you have to plan to be without both these players as of now. Uh, is a plan for Jacoby Myers a different Patriots wide receiver for Monday night? Like, the, 
Like, I don't uh, think so. I don't Devontae think Parker is, was really good when Myers was off the field. Yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not opposed saying you you can't do that, but I I don't know that Jacoby Myers is worth the weight when there might you know there's other good options that you can play on Sunday uh, and just say well I'm I'm going to play someone that I know is going to be better than hoping that Devontae Parker is the dude I mentioned Davis Mills back at starting quarterback didn't have Brandon Cooks last week for Houston um, if they don't have Brandon Cooks again Nico Collins is a he'll get volume he, he's a flex type of play where I like I'd play him over Jacoby Myers in a question mark Wayne Gallman Practice squad for the oh, Seahawks. Bruce Wayne Gallman is back. Yeah. I mean, you <laughs> might want to pick him up. Right now, Kenneth Walker, Travis Homer, DJ Dallas, all dealing with injuries. Uh, Tony, Tony, James Jones, Brooks, Robinson, Earl the Earl. third um, is <laughs> also I mean, Tony I, Jones. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't seen an injury report yet, but he left the game with injury with an injury as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough in the streets right now. It legit could be Wayne Goldman. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break, and then we're back with the Thursday night preview. All right, it is time to jump into a um, <laughs> a Thursday night matchup, and then we'll hop into the mailbag it's going to be very uh, interesting on Thursday night. Thursday night breakdown. The Las Vegas Raiders are five and seven. Hot streak. They are taking on the Los Angeles Rams, who are three and nine. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here is Las Vegas minus six. I don't even think the drop is available to me right now. Could somebody hit that for me? What? Wolford? You're going to bet on him? Yeah. As well, soon as a <laughs> drop comes. Andy's almost upset of the week. I like it when I get the face from Jason. That tells me I'm on to something. It, it is surprising because of how putrid the Rams have been and, and the, the hot streak of the Raiders. They've won three games in a row. But I do think back to last week where the Rams against the Seattle Seahawks had a competitive matchup, uh, more competitive than you thought it might be when I was putting together like a somewhat safe parlay. I thought about putting the Raiders in there and I remembered last week and how with Wolford they were better so I I I did avoid this matchup altogether now to be clear me calling for the Rams to make this competitive slash win the game does not mean that I am rooting for that I like that the Raiders are on this streak I'd like them to they're in the mix right for a playoff yes, spot they can make it but that's the kind of game the Raiders always lose the one they should win to make it easy on themselves to potentially get into the playoffs you mentioned it last week. It came down to the wire for the Seahawks. They had to make a two-minute drill drive to win the ball game against the Rams. It's been great if you have Devontae Adams. Mike mentioned sending in the car earlier this week because mm -hmm. the secondary, the Rams, 25th against wideouts over the last six weeks, 23rd against opposing quarterbacks. So compelling argument there. They are at home in this game. They will uh, get the ball a lot, I think, with the – you know, very limited Rams offense. But if the Rams can make this a lower scoring affair, now the over-under is 44. But if this is a 20-17 to 17 type of game, I think that's where the Rams could make it interesting. Cam Akers was 17 for 60, two rushing touchdowns last week, and plays the 32nd ranked run defense. The Rams will need to run. And the Raiders will give up plenty of yards on the ground to make Cam Akers interesting this week. Oh, Do you man. agree? I agree that the the matchup is there. The volume will be there. I think that Cam Akers is, is pretty locked into the role of the grinder. But that, I mean, it, it's so inefficient. If you're like that stat line of 17 for 60 without two touchdowns is, uh, is just abysmal. Like that, that's terrible for, for an RB2 that you're – trying to start since the bye week which he has played in five games he has a grand total of two targets 
Cam Akers does. So he's not involved in the passing game and has been very inefficient as a as a running back. I do agree that in a as a flex option, you could throw him in there, but there is fears of the trap of the carries. 17 carries is awesome. 72% of snaps is awesome. But 2 weeks ago it was it was 14 carries it looked like he's going to get the the you know, the lion's share of the workload and then and then week 12 against Kansas City in a plus matchup comes out has eight carries. Well, it's, so it's the game script. Like we were saying, that the the game with the the Seahawks was competitive and close. So if if you if you are projecting this to be a closer game, then then Acres is fine. If you are looking at this going, I well, I think the Raiders are gonna you know dominate this game. Then Kyron Williams will be on the field a whole bunch more. So it's it's Kyron, how, yeah. how do you see the how do you see the game shaping out? Completely agree. Kyron only out there twenty eight percent in the game where. You know, they had the lead, and they were trying to control the clock. Uh, I do think Akers is going to get back into the end zone this week. Uh, I think he's got that opportunity against the Raiders. Is that a, uh, is that a guarantee? That was a think. Yeah. That was a think. Okay. I was just asking, <laughs> seeing what he's seeing. I mean, of all the bets in all the world, <laughs> sure. Oh, sure. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. Let's just wrap them all into one yeah, let's, game. Yeah, let's, let's just two-legged. The almost upset mixed with the touchdown <laughs> guarantee. Let's just let's just put myself firmly in the camp of the team that's lost six straight games. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Okay. okay. Rams, go Rams. Amazing. Uh, Who's the quarterback? That would be John Wolford. Okay. Are we sure? Unless he doesn't play. Unless it's uh, Baker Mayfield. Yeah. You know, making a new home <laughs> in Los Angeles. I look, Josh Jacobs. You play him. Adams. Yep. You play him. Yep. Carr. You play him. Matt Collins, based on how the secondary has been playing for the Rams and the target totals. Like, Hollins made a big splash earlier in the year on touchdowns. In the past few weeks, he hasn't. he's only had one touchdown, and it was kind of on a broken play, but nine targets. Yeah, in two of the last three games. Exactly. So I think he is in contention, and I'd probably start – like, would you start Matt Collins over any wide receiver in the Rams locker room? Yes. Ben Skoranek might not even play. Yeah, I, I don't know who you would start on the Ram. You know, the Rams receiving core. Maybe you throw Van Jefferson out there. Tutu Atwell's been on the field. I there's with what about the, Powell. Yeah, a Powell um, could, but no, I I would certainly start Mac Collins over any one of those guys. As I go through this depth chart on the Rams, feels real good with the upset thing that I said. You know, because <laughs> they're just they're loaded. Just pull up a picture of Sean McVay, stare at that, and it feel better. Okay. All right. Uh, Darren Waller on track to come back next week. So if you want three for 32 with a chance of a touchdown, Foster Moreau is waiting for you. I think that's it for this game. I mean, it's uh, Raiders on a streak, three in a row. Still in the picture. About to blow it on Thursday night. Oh, man. All right, the rankings, the starts at tool. It's on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Let's head into the mailbag. 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 Yeah. All right. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button or dial the voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. Kick it off with a voicemail question. All right, guys. Got a quick question for you. Recently just got married, and now my current wife has a question. She needs to know Josh Palmer, Jerry Judy, or Michael Gallup this week. You guys are the best. Thanks so much. I I missed the question because I got really hung up on my current wife. <laughs> well, now now it's a big deal I, when you. I know, but your wife. you might want to go with a different word than current. Right, that because, does imply yes. that it will not be forever. If you took current out, it, the sentence would work just yeah. fine. Even just now, yes. my now, my now wife. wife. Yes, right. there you go. Yeah. Don't uh, also, I mean, technically current, but we yeah, it doesn't send the right message. So congratulations for getting to be the voicemail on this incredibly popular podcast, but I would not play or hear this clip. Yeah, Current prob voice, yeah. <laughs> Current voicemail. Current coach, Sean McVay. <laughs> okay. so, I do want – full PPR. I want to answer this one oh, because man. I think I have a – I might have a different take than you guys. All right. Okay. I've got my answer, so let's hear yours. I yeah, am, so the, the question was uh, Palmer, Judy, or Gallup. Yes. I am in the camp of Jerry Judy. Uh, Ooh. And, and and I don't want to make it fully contingent on whether Sutton suits up, but if Sutton doesn't play in this game, I think Jerry Judy will be very involved. Uh, he was already the favorite receiver 
uh, of Russell Wilson before his injury, came back last week, Sutton had no targets, got hurt, 43% of snaps. The game script for this one is, you know, yep. Kansas City's going to score on the Denver defense. So Russell's going to have to throw the football. You got to play four quarters. And I think Jerry Judy actually has more upside than these other two players. I I completely understand that. I, I figured that was where you were going in a full PPR since he has the opportunity to have the target market share of that offense. I, I get that. I would lean on the Joshua Palmer side. I still like him. I realize Mike Williams is coming back. So, you know, this isn't contingent just like the Cortland Sutton situation. It, for me, it's not contingent on Mike Williams missing this game. But Palmer in a game against Miami, 51 and a half point over under. You look at the target counts, I realize it's without Mike Williams, but it does say that this quarterback, Justin Herbert, has been utilizing Joshua Palmer. Past six games, averaging about 10 targets a game. Yeah, 10, 8, 10, 7, 11, 12 before that. I mean, he's been involved. It's a better game, but better quarterback. I lean that way. So, If Mike Williams is out, I would go with Palmer. And if he's in? Then I'd go to Judy. Okay. Which is three of us not going with Gallup against Houston. Yeah, which <sighs> Houston, it's it's so bizarre of like how how terrible their secondary is, and you can't target them. Yeah, I mean, it's frustrating. If you, if you if you just assume they get two quarters of play, I think we'd always bench those players. Dolphins uh, question from Twitter: Jack Goddard says, "Who do I start between Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert? Have three players on by, so I have to start at least one." Uh, this is a good luck <laughs> juicy matchup against the Chargers. I am in a position where I have to start. Oh, you have both of them? No, I have to start Raheem Mostert in oh. a couple of leagues. Well, and I'm moving forward with him, and I am hoping that it works out. He has had some great games this year. Both of them have had great games together. Jeff Wilson had a peculiar. Yes. Lack of total opportunities last week. Seven attempts for Mostert against the San Francisco defense, and he was actually a nice 4.3 a carry. But that game just, you know, eight attempts between the two of them. Yeah, it, it was really bizarre. Raheem Mostert played 60% of the offensive snaps. Jeff Wilson was down to 38%. That was a complete flip of what we had seen prior to that. It's so tough. We don't have insider knowledge. So you have one of two uh, kind of, thoughts that you have to believe you have to say well the most recent sample we have says that Mostert is the starting running back ahead of Jeff Wilson maybe he was dealing with some injuries in the previous weeks and so we have to go with the most recent thing we've seen or we say well the majority of time that these two have played together Jeff Wilson has been the starter and this last week was kind of a unique situation going back to San Francisco playing a team with a lot of familiarity and there could be specific game plans for that I lean on that side. I think that I'm taking the sample size of kind of a month of games of these two players being active together, and I lean the Jeff Wilson side, but there really is not a way for any analyst that is outside the Miami Dolphins building to know who is going to be the leader in the timeshare. Yeah, I, and I'll just add one thing to it. Like, even in the games where Wilson has had success, Mostert has always been the starter when active, but the amount of opportunities for Wilson – have seemed to beat out Mostert over the course of the game. And that's what makes it so hard is that, you know, Mostert's dealing with the knee injury. So do they manage those reps after the first quarter or so? And and if they have this game in control, I imagine you would see more Jeff Wilson, Mike. Do you lean the Wilson side? Do you lean the Mostert side? Yeah, I lean the sample side. I mean, as small as it is. I mean, how many games Which do we have? Which sample? Like, the, the sample before last <laughs> week? No, the, the sample of, of Jeff Wilson being in Miami, which is, what do we have, four four games, five games? But he has had more opportunities in the majority, so I lean Jeff Wilson. Gotcha. But Four games, five weeks. Okay, but I do – I think Raheem Mostert is very playable this week, especially with the six teams on by – I think that most it will. It'll be more like the the games we've seen because the matchup is juicy. Of the answer is both. Both will have I fine think that, games. I think that's probably probably right. Uh, what what week did he he come over from Miami? Was that week eight or week nine? It's a great uh, question. Week it's a great, week nine. Question. 
Week nine is, is week nine was the the first week for Wilson. Yes, against Chicago. Yeah, so so Mostert since that time, obviously he missed a complete game, but he hasn't hit ten carries. He's averaged eight attempts. Wilson's averaged uh, ten attempts in those games. It's tough, like you said, no Very. inside information as to what running back will complement the offense better against Los Angeles this week. Question from Gio Bio: Would you Gio Bio? Yeah, that's okay. it. Okay. Who would you start, Devin Singletary or Jared Cook against the Jets? Another one of those tough situations where it was like, did Jared Cook, was this a... The tight end? I think it's supposed to be James Cook. Yeah, I would imagine it's James the Cook. The, the not playing tight end? James Cook. So, yes. J Jerry, I mean, Jared Cook. I put this one squarely on Brooks' shoulder. Yes. Yep, that yep. was this guy. That's a burgundy situation. Yeah. So, James Cook. James Cook. Much better option than Jared Cook. I am on the side of James Cook, but you have to make a decision as to one. You have to acknowledge you could be wrong. That this, could have been a single game versus a breakout. Very Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert. But I'm going to go with the numbers of how players that are rookies at the running back position progress over the course of the year. I'm going to go with the eyeballs. Jared Cook, not Jared Cook, James Cook. <laughs> Uh, the running back Jay Cook has more juice. Brooks, I'm going to kill you. I love that. I love that the question is being modified in the doc, but the name is staying Jared Cook. Oh yeah. Why are you not changing Singletary, the name? Jared Cook or James Cook? Okay, that's Jared that's Cook question. is the set. Easy question, Jason. Do you uh, what What do you think is going to happen here over the back half of the year for the Bills um, with James Cook? Uh, I I. This is a little bit different than the Raheem Moser, uh Jeff Wilson situation in the sense that James Cook is a rookie running back who you wait for them to get the opportunity to really prove it. And then once he does and he looked so good, you would expect him to hold on to that. Um, so there's, there's a little bit of a difference. However, he's been there the whole season and – you know, we just in 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 similarities to that Dolphins backfield. You have a really large sample of Singletary being out there seventy percent of the snaps in the vast majority of games. This is a matchup that I believe will be close. I don't think that the Buffalo Bills. I I believe they're favored nine and a half points uh, was the last spread I saw, which says it's not close. If it's not close, I think you're going to have more. James Cook. I believe that this will be a close divisional matchup, um, and so I lean on the Singletary that, that's side. That's the thing that killed me last week is it, did, it didn't follow that script. You know, this was a game where the James Cook got all the early work, and they were down, and it was competitive. Like, we were – because like, we've been making that storyline all year, right, where, like, Devin Singletary was part of close games, but last week was not the case. James Cook had – like, we were talking about it on Slack all through the beginning of that game – it was like, this is a lot of James Cook. This is a lot of James Cook. Why are we getting first half James Cook? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't when the score got out of hand. But I do think that the the that the actual uh, matchup was not as difficult as it will be against the the Jets. I mean, they won the game twenty four to ten. It wasn't so much that James Cook came in in relief and cleanup duty, um, but the the Jets are battling. You know, the Jets are still in contention here for the division, aren't they? Or are they out of the running now? The division, I'm not sure. They're still fighting for the playoffs. Between the two, oh, I I think I would go James Cook, it, who has, like, over the past two weeks, 11 total targets. Man, he has the, so much more juice yes, than it's, it's, this is This is an extremely difficult situation. I do not envy making it, but if I had them both in, in my on my bench, I'd go James Cook. Man, what? But but you're you're trying to get in the playoffs here. Can you reliably start either one of these guys? Like you could you could throw one of these guys in the lineup and have a five carry game, because the yeah. other oh, one yeah, just has sure. the work. It's really difficult. But I, the more that I think about it, I I I, I go to the <laughs> I go to the side of James Cook because of the juice, because of the athleticism. And at the end of the day, if both guys end up with the same workload, if they both got ten carries. And five targets, I would rather have the presumed output I will get from James Cook than from Devin Singletary. Last week in the first half, 10, 10 touches for Cooks. Devin had five. And you had Naeem Hines. But he's going to be the goal line. You had Naeem Hines Singletary. quite involved. Singletary is the yeah. goal line. And you have, so you have the, the game in week 11 against the, the Cleveland Browns. 
11 for 86. That was James Cook on the ground. They followed. They rewarded the the, the young rookie with two carries the next week against Detroit. Did he fumble that week? Uh, I Which did not week was have that? a registered fumble. The week beginning 12. of twelve. Oh, okay. Um, this question from Twitter: Oof. Do I trust Garrett Wilson or Tyler Lockett more in a matchup I'm favored in this? Wow. Week? We're just gonna be these are hay, is, <laughs> these are all haymaker questions. What is happening? Garrett Wilson takes on Buffalo. Lockett against Carolina. Lockett has scored in five straight games. Lockett had, I believe, twelve targets. Last week, maybe more. I think it was 12. He had nine catches. That's off the top of my head. Carolina is also terrible against the slot, of which you've got, what was it, about 40% of Lockett's snaps come from the slot. I also don't think they're going to run the ball. I mean, they, yes. they don't have a running game. Um, so, you know, Lockett is more trustworthy here. The, the, the real benefactor of all the running back injuries is probably the wide receivers. And I would – why it, I can't imagine a world where you're actually benching Garrett Wilson though. Like how who are the who are the other players on your team? Well, Garrett, I have here's here's Garrett Wilson's uh just his his stat lines the last uh 5 games. 6 for 115 on 7 targets, 8 for 92 on 9 targets, 2 for 12 in a game that got Zach Wilson extradited Benched. out of New York. And then new quarterback comes in, eight targets, five for ninety five, and two touchdowns. Oh man. And the game script says I mean, if they're if they're underdogs, the game script says they're gonna need to throw the football. Um it's eight just for tough. One sixty two this last week. Man. I mean, Lockett has been twelve, fifteen, eleven, fourteen, twenty three. So trust. You had a first half where Garrett Wilson did nothing. But he's more explosive. Yeah, Eileen. He, he's more 200 yard potential. Eileen, Eileen Wilson. Lockett. Oh gosh, Eileen Lockett. These questions are too hard, Brooks. Please yes. give us easier questions. Also, monitor this game is in Buffalo, so I don't think we're expecting or expecting weather yet, but that could be a problem. I have to bench Tyler Lockett in the league this week. As of what? Yeah. For who? Jefferson. Yeah. Okay. Tyreek Hill. Okay. For sure. Yeah. AJ Brown. Uh huh. Congrats. Yeah. All right. DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, oh sure. Okay. All right. Fair enough. You're not benching him. You're just. I feel rude. I feel yeah. like I am doing something wrong. I wish I could still trade. Yeah, that's that's tough. That was 100 percent me just setting up. You you wanted to? Flex? I just wanted to talk about the four players yeah. I have in that league. Um, where you're behind both Mike and myself record wise. Um, 35 percent <laughs> chance of <per> precipitation <laughs> right now for Buffalo, but okay. does not. I mean, it's it's pretty early um al you you think the singletary jared cook is a layup well yeah if it's yeah. if it's jared actually cook, jared cook not even playing oh yeah. i got gotcha. you yeah so you got tricked again i did he did that just so he could hit the drop i hope so yeah, you're not plotting our band anymore, our Christmas band? No, we got that unlocked. It's all figured out. Who's, I, I'm just booking venues right now. Who's on the synth? Because if it's, if it's Christmas. Oh, well, you know who that is. That's who? Schneider. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, Schneider for sure. On the keys. Oh, the how, piano man. How dare he's probably, me. <laughs> he's probably going to be vocals, He's too. probably lead vocals, yeah. yeah. Well, if you want to listen to me talk about Jared Cook some more, we will be on Spotify Live this afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. One more reminder for you, footclanvote.com. If you've got, you know, the Christmas spirit flowing through your veins and you want to uh, cruise on over to footclanvote.com, it is two clicks to vote for us for both categories. And we'd really, really appreciate it. Yes, we would. As we appreciate all of you, the Foot Clan, thank you for tuning in. Never not working. The matchup preview starts of the week. Boom, boom, kicker. All coming at you on tomorrow's episode of the show. Thank you to the producers, Al, Judge Giamatti, the Borgogan. We'll be back tomorrow. See you later, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. <laughs>